Hi there everyone, it's Monica, just Monica, and I am here playing Cinderella Phenomenon again. I am continuing from where I left off. Um, uh, apparently I was right here. I soon came to realize that this is... <laughs> I have. To, it's been a while since I've done this, so I have to like get back into the voices and stuff. I soon came to realize that it is easier to walk around town now that everyone has forgotten who I am. The atmosphere, the atmosphere around town feels brighter. All the spiteful stares are gone. Princess Evangeline. Oh? Oh, how are you doing? Is your wife feeling any better? Evangeline has responded to most of the people who knew her. She seems to know a good majority of the people in town. I hang back as Imagine speaks with a man. The night escort hovers somewhere nearby, watching for disturbances. We are going to take longer than an hour if she continues like this. I am not going to rush her. Don't you need to return to the palace to continue whatever work it is that you are doing? Rod raises an eyebrow at- Fucking... Rod raises an eyebrow at me. I do have to get back to my studies, but my family always comes first. If this makes Imagine happy, then I will gladly come with her to town. It's a small thing. Happy- ah, That's- Cause she's- she's learning about what it is to do good for others, I'm like, that's- Hey! Happy? I look more closely at Imagine. She is smiling, but then she always smiles. I do not understand. She's more at ease talking to the town people sometimes because they don't judge her. Why would she have to worry about being judged? It is clear that everyone adores her. Imagine takes the man's hand. Imagine takes the man's hand. Bah. <laughs> Imagine takes the man's hand. The man's hand. The man's hand. It rhymes. Uh, in hers, as she wishes him well. Wishes. Wishes. <laughs> Rod points out the gesture. See that? That's goodness. You could learn something from my sister. You could learn something from my sister, Monica. Is goodness pretending to be interested in the lives of strangers? Oh, um, ow! That hits. That hits. That hits. Imagine, Imagine eventually says her goodbyes before walking towards a familiar store. This is the toy shop I visited with Imagine and Rod before. I glance at Rod and notice the expression on his face. He seems conflicted, but why? But before I but before I can ask, Rod marches in front of me and decisively pushes open the door. I want I want that bear. This teddy bear is so cute. The the, the bow needs to be pink. <laughs> when I when I enter, Madeline is already hugging the shop girl, Victoria. Wait, Viorica. There's no there's no T. It's not Victoria. <laughs> Viorica, Imagine, you're as beautiful as ever. Oh please, I look the same. You on the other hand. Imagine steps back before nodding, a bright smile on her face. Oh? Being in love suits you. When is the wedding? Wedding? Is she already engaged? I catch a small movement in the corner of my eyes and turn, and turn to, uh, to glance at Rod. I catch a small movement in the corner of my eyes and turn to glance at Rod. I notice his fingers clench into a fist before he quickly hides his hand behind his back. Though his expression isn't as, as impassive as always, I notice tenseness in his shoulders. Desimund and I haven't set a date yet, but we will. 
Decimon and I haven't set a date yet, but it should be soon. Would you... Victoria's trails off when she notices the rest of us. Hello, Rod. Viorica. His tone is surprisingly static. Last time he was here, he sh Last time he was here, I was sure he sounded friendlier. So what can I help you with, Magdalene? Are you looking for another doll? Another doll? But Magdalene is not interested in dolls. Oh no, I'm just here to see you. I can't stay for long since Rod has things to do. Magdalene, I'll wait for you outside. Oh, okay. I know it is my job to follow Magdalene around, but I am not at all interested in hearing her talk to this girl. Um, hmm. Oh, we, okay, we need to save. I, I want to see what all of this is. Uh, this is a really good route. This is a good game, and this is a good route. Um, hmm. Let's see. Do I be a good girl, or do I be a brat? I think... I think the correct answer is to do this one, but I think I want to do this one. So I will stay in with Magdalene. Oh no, I picked the wrong one. That was the wrong answer. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens and then I'll go back and pick it, because that was definitely the wrong answer. Before I can decide what to do, Magdalene... Before I can decide what to do, Imagelina has turned to look at me with a smile. This is Monica. She just started working as my personal maid today. It's not like you to it's not like you to make a maid follow you around. Imagelina's expression quickly becomes apologetic. I'm sorry, Monica. I realized I didn't even ask if you wanted to come with us. I just expected you to tag along. Mm -hmm. Why is she why is she apologizing? I am meant to tend to her regardless of where she is, where unless she dismisses me. Unless she dismisses me. I'm sure Monica doesn't mind. It's such a beautiful day today, after all. <laughs> Fucking stop, Monica, you're such a sub. Imagine turns turns to me and smiles. You don't have to wait with me if you don't want to, Monica. I won't be here. I won't be here long. I only wanted to see Victoria for a bit. I haven't been able to see her often since I've moved. Well, that's to be expected. Princesses shouldn't be associating with shop with shop girls like me. Viorica has a point. Why does Imagine insist on this? But you're my best friend, and I'm still not accustomed to the fact that I can't just visit you every day. Those were the good old days, when we were still neighbors. I'd still live next to you if I could. Do you remember all those games of tag we used to play together when we were children? Remember how Rod always lost? The two girls laugh together at the shared memory. I try not to roll my eyes. So they were all childhood. So they were all childhood friends. Are you sure there's nothing I can help you with? We all turn at the sound of door chimes as the, as a customer walks in. Excuse me. One moment. Magdalene turns to Viorica. Returns that. Viorica turns to Magdalene with a guilty expression. I'm so sorry, but I have to take this. No, no, it's all right. I'll come and see you another time. I promise we can talk as long. As, I promise we can talk for as long as you want next time. Imagine smiles and hugs her friend in farewell. I follow closely behind Imagine as she exits the shop. Rod pushes away from the wall that he had been leaning against once he notices us leaving. Ready to go? Madeline nods with a small smile. The two of us begin to make our way to the palace again. Okay. 
I'm gonna save here. Like page four. Um, and then I'm gonna load this. <laughs> okay, what happens if I go outside? Oh, okay. So it didn't matter. I think. Because it didn't do the crystal thing. My time might be better spent trying to improve Rod's opinion of me. If I could get him to tell, tell me precisely what I have done wrong, I could make up for it. I hope that would make I would hope that would give me a good deed. I curtsy towards the two girls. Excuse me, your highness, I shall waste <laughs> Ex Excuse me, your highness, I shall wait outside with Rod. I cough to clear my throat. With the prince. Okay, I won't be long. I move to stand next to Rod, who is leaning against the wall. Okay, what is this? What even is this? Why do you keep on following me? Tell me how to rectify whatever wrong I have done to your family. This again. I cannot help but scowl at Rod's answer. You spout all this nonsense about goodness but refuse to help me. How is that good? You haven't given me any reason to help you. What? If you're not serious about genuinely learning how to be good, then I'm not interested in helping you. Maybe I can catch him off guard by bringing up his response in the toy shop just now. Fine then, I will now make normal conversation. Who is Viorica to you? Has she done something to hurt your family too? Viorica is a childhood friend. She's not like you at all. Oh? Then why were you acting so cold to her? You obviously didn't want to be inside the shop. Rod looks away from me and absently kicks a pebble on the ground. There we go! That, there's the little thing. That is none of your bus that is none of your business. I sigh, disappointed with Rod's reaction. Rod turns away from me as a Madeline exits the shop. I think he likes her maybe? It could be it. <laughs> Ready to go? Ready to go? Madeline nods with a small smile. The two of us begin to make our way to the palace again. Okay. And then I will save... over... like, over this, because... now we know, and that... <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. and then return. By the time we return to the palace, evening has fallen. I hope we're not late for dinner. Oh, we said we were going to be gone for an hour. We were out all, all day. The minute the carriage is open, we are greeted by two familiar faces. Sir Alicaster and Sir Mithro stand before us. Princess Magdalene, Prince Rod, I was on my way to look for you when Sir Mithros informed me of your whereabouts. Uh, no, I refuse to do like a gruff, manly voice. I have enough dysphoria as it is. She glares at. He glares at the knight escort, and the knight shrinks back. Sir Alicaster turns sharply towards me after, his eyes arrowed, narrowed. Why is he looking at me like that? It was getting late, and the queen was worried. I'm so sorry. He looks like Sebastian! <laughs> Princess Magdalene, Prince Rod, it is almost time for dinner. Please, let me escort you inside. Why, are, why is he... I don't know, I'm a mess. Sir Mithra's gestures for them to fo follow him. I'm about to follow after them when Sir Alicaster suddenly moves to block my path. His eyes are cold. He opens his mouth to say something, but then closes it and shakes his head. You are dismissed, girl. You may go back to your quarters. But... 
that is in order. His gaze is piercing. Even when I was the princess, I was not able to stand up to that gaze. Yes, sir! <laughs> Oh, okay. So they, we're not going back to the market? That's interesting. As I walked down the hall, I noticed Rod heading in my direction. Rod? He suddenly grabs my arm and pulls me down the hall. Where are you taking me? Where are you taking me? <laughs> Rod does not answer and just continues moving until we reach an unfamiliar door. What is going on? Rod cuts me off by placing a finger to my lips. He looks around warily before pu pulling me in through the door with him. Um, what? Um, what? <laughs> this place. I've heard of this place before, but I have never seen it. Is this the secret passage that leads into town? Rod does not answer me. He simply keeps... Rod does not answer me. He simply, he simply keeps walking, and I see no other option but to trail after him. How is it that you know of this place? He still refuses to answer. Are you deaf? Rod suddenly stops, and I bump into his back. I stumble back with a scowl. You ask too many questions. Because you refuse to answer any of them. I glare back at him until Rod makes an exasperated sound. Lady Parfait is the one who told me about this passage. It makes sneaking out of the palace easier. Parfait? She did not give me any explanation as to how she knew of this place. There are only meant to be two copies of the keys. The king has one and Sir Alicaster has the other. Then why do you have a key? Then why do you have a key? Do not, don't tell me you stole it from the king. I am not a thief. Lady Parfait also has a copy. She saw fit to provide me with a key for my own use. What? How does Parfait have a key to this palace? You'll have to ask her that for yourself. Once we step into town, I realize that we're headed. We're going back to the market. Okay, <laughs> immediately after I say that we're not going to the market is when it happens. Um, okay. Delora is the first person we see as soon as we enter the market. Well, well, look what the cat dragged in. Delora, you. Rod's glare silences me. He steps forward and points back at me, gaze icy. She is not staying at the palace. What? Delora raises an eyebrow. Why is that? She works there now. I do not know what game you are playing, but I will not be a part of it. Excuse me? This is not a game. I do not want you meddling in my life as you meddled with hers. Oh. Oh! Maybe them being... Like, royalty is part of the fairy tale curse. The room's temperature drops several degrees. Dolores stares at Rod, her expression lack suddenly lacking any emotion. With all due respect, your highness, I don't I don't I do not want to meddle with your wallowing. But that is just because you do not wish to break your But just because you do not wish to break your curse doesn't mean that others shouldn't want to either. You should be humbled that our princess here thought you would be able to help her. Rod raises an eyebrow. Where is Lady Parfait? Where is Lady Parfait? Of course you want to talk to Parfait, because she puts things nicely. Fine, I'll fetch her for you. Dolora curtsies as she sweeps out of the room. Rod sighs. He clearly looks irritated, but he doesn't put a voice to his agitation. Now that we're alone in the empty room, the silence is deafening. Ooh, I want to ask both of these. See, I like that I'm able to ask both of these questions. I'm going to go there. Okay. Mm. 
Okay. I'm thinking... I think we'll, yeah. We'll see, we'll finish this part and then we'll end it. Uh, my friend was complaining that the videos were so long. It's like, how dare. 30 minutes is like, I wouldn't watch anything less. <laughs> um... I'll go with this one, and then I'll go with this one, because I think that this is the correct one. The further away f the further away you are from my family, the better. I glare at him. Your reaction is completely unwarranted. I am trying to make up for what I have done in the past. Only because you are being forced to. Ah, that was the correct one. Um... Why should that make any difference? Why should that make any difference? Besides, I'm still want I'm still willing to help you break your curse, even though it appears that you do not want to. I do not realize as I do not realize that the anger inside of me at first, and then I notice that my hands are fists and I am shaking. You are angry at me for treating your family with unkindness, and yet you do not treat me with any respect of kindness either. Excuse me. I realize this is the angriest I've felt in a long time, and it makes the words fall out of my mouth. You are guilty of the same you are guilty of the same disrespect that you hold me accountable for. We are both being cruel to family, are we not? Re Rod's eyes are ablaze as he stalks towards me. He stops right in front of me, his mouth pressed on a firm line. As you are so fond of telling Miss Madeline, we do not share any blood. The only thing pulling us together is the king, and you do not share his morals. Remember this, Monica. You will never be a part of my family. Oh, come on. And I will never see you as a sister. Oh. Rod storms out of the reception area just as Delora enters. Sorry, it looks like Parfait wasn't in. She pauses and then gives me a wry smile. It seems this partnership is going well. I throw up, I throw up, I throw my hang, my hands up in anger. He is infuriating. Not as helpful as you thought. I was surprised that you, I was surprised you were asking for his help in the first place. All I have been doing today is following around Imagine and he still finds reason to snap at. In his eyes, I can do nothing right, even though I am making my, even though I make an on, even though I am making an honest effort to break my curse. Dolores, I. Delora eyes me as she slides down a chair into a chair. Has he told you anything about his curse? Nothing useful. Delora sighs. Boys can be so secretive about the silliest things. Rod has been aware of how to break his curse from the very beginning. Then why hasn't he broken it? I have no idea. I think the only person who knows the full terms and conditions of Rod's curse is Parfait. Parfait? Parfait has known Rod for a while, and she convinced him to keep coming to the Marchand, even after come to the Marchand, even after he gave up on breaking his curse. Parfait also thinks that working with you will convince Rod to try and find another way to break his curse. Another way? Don't ask me. I don't know much about his curse either. Okay, so that shoots that theory down. But if you keep trying, you might convince Rod to talk. I doubt that very much. Seems that all I am doing is convincing Rod that I do not deserve to break my own curse. Dor Dolora looks at me curiously for a few moments, then she grins. I have an idea. If it is another terrible idea... Oh no, this one's much better. I'll stick around with you. You know, watch out for you. What? Dolora, watch out for me? I'm so... I'm surprised, and Dolora stands before me in her doll form. There is no way that you and Rod are you gonna. There's no way you and Rod are gonna sort yourselves out with some kind of help. So I'll be tagging along. It's much easier when I'm travel sized. Hmm. <laughs> Why do I feel like she'll only make things worse? Come on then. Dolora somehow manages to jump into the front pocket of my apron, which is thankfully large enough to fit her doll body. Let's go get- let's go find us a prince and get ourselves back into the palace. Okie dokies, um... 
I think we'll... I think we'll save here, because we know that that's the correct answer now. And now I want to load this. I don't need to explain myself to you. Do you even know how to break your curse? I do. So why are you not doing anything? It's none of your business. Uh, yep. Ah, okay, so this is just the thing. Okay. Thank you so, so much for watching, everyone. Um, this is this is getting more and more intense. Heck yeah. Um, thank you so, so much for watching. Have a great day, and remember to smile. Bye!